Carlos Boozer, of course, on the bench. Carolina, you knew they wanted to pound it inside. It took about 15 seconds for Brendan Haywood to slam one home. And on the other end, Haywood making his defensive presence felt, blocking the shot. 12 points and 8 rebounds. Really didn't hear much from him after that. And Jason Williams with an ugly three-point miss. And Dunleavy throwing up the brick. Battier, new. Chris Duhon, not even close. Duke missed nine of its first ten threes. Duke showing a little bit of a half-court trap. Joseph Forte, Chris Lang, and Julius Peppers. Only field goal of the day for Peppers. UNC down one after the three-point play. Then Duhon with a fake. He finds Nate James in there for two. And the key for Duke is creating a frenetic pace and getting it up, Digger. Yes, it was. Let's go up and down. Push the ball. Wear out Carolina. Look at him trying to get back and find people. Penetration. Kick. Lang's not going to go out and guard that three. Dunleavy knocks it down. This time a little turnover leading to some more transition. Jason Williams. All the way by himself. Quick hands, quick speed. Push the ball down the floor. That was the game plan. Forte does, comes back, hits the big three. Carolina on top by one at that point. Forte believes he should be ACC player of the year. End of the first half. We saw Williams with that ugly miss, but he got it going, Dick. Yeah, and he penetrates, gets up and under and over, makes it happen there. Now he comes down, pulls back, hits a three right before halftime, and says, you don't want that? Take this one. Another three. The stout bombers were flying, and they hit the targets for the threes. Duke had a two-point lead at the break. Second half to six-point game. Haywood working and one. Cuts the lead in half all the way down to three. Carolina's on a run, and this, the turning point of the game. Forte will come up with a brilliant defensive play. He's on his way for the dunk. Oh, Battier with the block. Duke going the other way. Matt Christensen, Williams, right here. See the three, B the three. Big turnaround, five point swing, and look at the great replay. Battier makes a great sprint down the floor, gets a piece, comes back. Now this is another three. That was a five point swing, two that Duke didn't get, that they got from the three point shot, and two that Carolina didn't get. And Williams comes back again, another three, and the barrage starts the three point game. All of a sudden, it was a 10 point game. You see it's seven here. Nate James on the drive. Battier working hard inside. 66 57, Devils on top. More from the senior leader, Duhon, the freshman, Battier, stroking. 70 to 57, the Devils pulling away, and Carolina couldn't handle the guards. The guards were the quickest you want to get. Now, watch the penetration when he goes down. See the defense collapse. Duhon's open in the three point line. Pass it back. He hits the three. Carolina is stunned. What do you do? How do you guard? Okay, Williams again with the ball. So, you don't want to guard me? Yeah, I'll take it to the hole. Gets it done with the penetration to the basket. And again, finally, Williams just knows how to get it on Carolina. Really got tired, Reese. Yet Billy Donovan insisted it was more opportunity than adversity. Players would mature, and when the wounded Gators could return, those who could did return, Florida would be stronger for it. Sunday, the Gators hope to fulfill Donovan's prophecy by forcing Kentucky to share the SEC title. And now to the O-Dome on senior day, Brent Wright, one of Donovan's first big recruits there. Emotional moment, Wright, of course, has battled injuries all this season. Has his jersey behind the glass there. Kentucky would try to spoil the senior day festivities. Donovan warned his team to channel its emotion, and they do. Senior Teddy Dupay picks it up out to Brett Nelson. Bottom. Three nothing Gators and the difference transition, Digger. Yeah, absolutely. When you can run and push the ball, Teddy Dupay, unbelievable. Stroking the threes, getting it done. It's five out of six threes in this game. He took control whenever they needed. He was the difference and got Kentucky in a hole early. Gators shot 65% from behind the arc. But Darius Halton, one of the guys who got some extra time, making the nice play but missing it. But the U-Haul, Udonis has one there to follow it. He had 20 and 9. Gators by 15. Another turnover here. Keith Bogans with the steal from the youngster, Orion Green. Bogans had a terrific day as Kentucky scraps back in it. They get the seven. But Brett Nelson, maybe short of Jason Williams and Tinsley. This guy's close. He's terrific. Love his game. He knows how to get open. He knows how to dish. And he knows how to pull up and hit the J. He had six assists, but he also knew how to score the points shooting the threes. That's a pretty, pretty stroke that we saw profiled in a national newspaper this week. Nelson with 17 points. Gators building it up to a 12-point lead. You mentioned the pass. How about Teddy Dupay? Another huge recruit for Donovan that got this program growing. Dupay, 28 points. That matches his career high. Kentucky, back to with an eight. Tayshawn Prince, 
Maybe the SEC Player of the Year goaltending was called on Kentucky's Marvin Stone there. Check out the replay. Maybe it was Matt Bonner. Could have been Bonner coming up as he gets a piece of it. I don't know. He grabbed the rim. rim. Bonner that is clearly goaltending did. in the shot interference. But Tubby got himself teed up, arguing the call that Bonner did grab the rim, which you saw he clearly did. And then Prince, bottom. 18 and 11 for Tayshawn. The lead back down to seven, but then it's Bonner. This guy just does everything for the Gators. Knocks down the long one there. He had 12 points, eight rebounds, four assists. Bonner playing brilliantly. 94 to 86. Florida wins it. Cats still SEC champs for the 41st time, but they have to share it with Florida. Yeah, but I love you, Donis Haslam. He was the guy in the paint today, had 14 points when they needed him, especially in the second half of just punishing Kentucky enough so that the perimeter game was there also for Florida. I mentioned the conference title might be shared. It appeared that the day belonged to the Gators. Burrow and Chattanooga, second half, 9.6 to go. Greensboro by one. Courtney Eldridge misses a couple of free throws. Clyde McCauley from the Mox, no fear. Look at McCauley taking strong. Nobody even close to stopping him. Chattanooga seems to have sealed its bid up one. 2.6 seconds to go, but the former digger assistant, Fran McCaffrey, and his wife, Margaret, watching on. And did Fran pull a play from the digger? Syracuse play, yes. And but nobody guards the guy throwing it inbounds and gets it there and he scores rather than kick it back for a jumper. David Shook, half a second left to look at it again. He took it strong. That ball was in the air for a long time. Nobody got a hand on it. 67 66, four tenths of a second. Can't get it done. Can the Mox? Toot Young tried to throw up a miracle. He was a tournament MVP, but it will be Greensboro advancing to the NCAA tournament. 67-66 winner in the Southern Conference. Shook, who hit the game-winning shot, 21 points, 9 rebounds, and your old pal cutting down the net. Yeah, he was head coach at Lehigh, got them to the NCAA tournament, the upset Temple that year. Comes to Notre Dame as a head coach to be an assistant. Now he's at Greensboro, his second school, making it to the NCAA tournament. I got to get him out of there now. He's been there long <laughs> enough. Get him a bigger job. Oh, yeah. You know what? The Greensboro people love you for that. He's a <laughs> place that's been very tough for Illinois to win. Terrence Simmons trying to keep it that way. 19 points for him. Under 30 seconds left in the half. Shane Schilling. Oh, Shane. Come back, Shane. Minnesota up by one at the half. Second half, the Illini down four. The old inside outside game going. Yeah, you got to do that. When you get it going inside outside, take it into the paint. Oh, is that Sean Harrington? That's Sean Harrington. He loves shooting those three. threes with consistency. Sean Harrington? Oh, another three with consistency. 13 points for him. Illinois up by two. Next possession. Well, Frank Williams, the pride of Peoria, or at least one of them. Illinois up by four. Just over two oh. minutes to go. Williams. He's got a cool game. He's doesn't really he? matured this year. He's been the difference. His leadership and his smartness in decision making. 15 points for him. Sergio McLean. He thinks he's the pride of Peoria, yes. leading it for Brian Cook. 67 59. The Illini go on the road. They win it. Illinois gets a share of the Big Ten title. Uh, Corey Bradford's got to get his threes going. He goes one for seven today. And if they got any shot at trying to get to the Final Four, Bradford's got to get it going like he did against Michigan State, hitting six threes when they won that game at home. Self, the first coach to win the Big Ten title in his first season since Lee Rose in 79 at Purdue. Missouri and Kansas, senior day at the Fog. Luke Axtell, Eric Chenoweth, Kenny Gregory being honored. Big 12's leading scorer, Kareem Rush, was back. That was his only field goal. One for seven. You know, he's had the left hand injury there it was all about Clarence Gilbert hey Clarence always thinks he's open but how do you really get open here Digger? You, know, you just push get over get out and you just shoot the threes and get it done Gilbert is solid performance but he was the only thing looking to read screens watch how he works off Gregory good bump screen comes off it hits the three solid performance from Gilbert but that they, they need a little bit more offense had 19 points on the day Gilbert would miss here but Ricky Paulding was there to Throw it back down. Game tied at 39. 16 for Paulding. Still in the second half. Kansas on the break. Drew Gooden's back. His second game back from injury. He looks just fine. Yeah. 17 points the other night in a win against K-State. Played solid today. Five players for Kansas in double figures. Even Chenoweth did a good job getting 11 points. And Collison getting the bucket there. 13 points. 13 rebounds. Gooden had 19. KU wins it. You see, one of your friends, Digger? Oh, yeah. Murph <laughs> starts it off. He goes to the hole. Doesn't miss, but there he is. Ryan Humphrey to transfer from Oklahoma. Offensive rebound score. Notre Dame had that early lead, but the freshman from oh. Georgetown, Mike Sweetney, was impressive. Love his game. He's been solid all year. Getting it done, up and over. A little jump hook on the baseline over Humphrey. And he works the window. He gets the ball. And watch him use the glass right here nicely. Sweetney. Nice game for a freshman. 19 points. Georgetown had an eight-point lead. Notre Dame trying to fight back. Here comes Murph. 
full screen and roll action. He had 19. In the second half, time winding down. Kevin Braswell coming up with a play for the Hoyas. Braswell really tough. Nice. Nah, no, give me the big three. Inside, outside. Notre Dame too deep, then guard the line. Well, double-double for Braswell. 12 and 10. 79-72. Georgetown wins it. Hoyas just on the inside. Well, the Hoyas punished them. 21 offensive rebounds for 26 points. That's the strength and difference. Wait, wait, Sweetney today, 11 points first minute, 11 minutes of the game. Believe me, this team is solid. I love how they're playing going into the Big East Conference Tournament. All right, so Georgetown gets that first round by Syracuse. Louis. At the Garden, where St. John's has beaten 15 straight Big East foes. Louis was watching, and Syracuse trying to free up Preston Shump. Yes, he was not really struggling too much, but he comes off this double screen. Didn't have a great game today. Reads this, though, very, very well. Hits it, coming off a double screen for a three. Came up with 20 points in this one. St. John's down four late. Sharif Fordham comes up with the steal. Willie Shaw plants himself behind the three. Oh, what are you doing? Fouling on the three-point shot. We hit the free throw, four-point play to tie the game at 68. Syracuse going for the win. Shumpert, no. Deshaun Williams for the win. No. Ball will be fumbled out of bounds, and St. John's has it with plenty of time. That's what I probably should have said for the lead rather than the win. 3.2, Omar Cook. That's for the win. It didn't go. Omar couldn't believe it wouldn't fall, and oh, neither could Louie. <laughs> <laughs> and then Alec Griffin really stepped up in overtime. Bayheim crediting him for showing real guts. First off the screen, knocking down the three, now on the drive. Yeah, drive, not only that, the double overtime. First overtime, he gets it going. Double overtime, gets it going. He ends up with 17 of his 31 points in both overtimes. Tied at 76, Shumpert inbounds to Moe Brown, misses Quest Dwayne is going to have a shot. Going to go to double overtime. Bayheim gut-wrenching on the side. The next frame, this time, Dwayne. Find the bottom. Dwayne with 10. Syracuse wins it 93 to 91. The Johnny's 15 game Big East winning streak at the Garden is over. Syracuse 20 of 22 from the free throw line in the two overtimes. So half NC State will be down by one as the seniors get honored. The recognition. Clifford Crawford. Clifford, the big red wolf pack man, throwing up a little funky shot there at 18 points. Wolf pack grabs a two point lead. Wake. We assume the lead by three, Darius Sengaila. This guy, so tough at times. 21 points, wake up, 48-42. NC State still down by that margin. Archie Miller, boy steps inside the entertainment center. He is in range. NC State within range at three, and then it's Robert O'Kelly answer. O'Kelly comes back, good game today. 15 points, hits a big three there. Herb Sendek and the Wolfpack, they go down 76 to 58. Deacons will get another crack at Maryland in the ACC tournament. The Terps swept the regular season meeting. NC State gets Duke. A-10, Xavier and Dayton. Dayton down four, three and a half to go. Yonte Holland driving to the hoop. Strong is Yonte. Dayton within two. Under two minutes in the game. Flyers coming back from a deficit when the X-Men seem to have this thing wrapped up. Holland there again with the tip in. And Dayton has a four-point lead. Under 10 seconds to go. Xavier within two. Holland, guess who? Chalmers on the shot. And Holland with the rebound. He draws the foul. Makes the free throw. 16 points for him. Seconds remaining. David West. This guy has just been terrific all year. 19th double-double of the season. Keeping the Musketeers in it within two. Xavier, one last chance to tie. Rims out. Chalmers trying to make it, and Dayton pulls the upset as they storm the court in the house that Dan Patrick built. 65-62. Yeah. Musketeers have lost six straight at Dayton. You think Dayton winning this game today, their best player offensively in the perimeter? Tony Stanley, only four points. If you thought he only got four, you think they won? No, they won without him, getting 65-62. Big win for the Flyers going into the A-10 tournament. Dana Altman, team. Knocked out Indiana State last year. Mincer, Michael Mincer, the guy who beat Indiana on the last second shot. He's way outside with a three. Indiana State up by five. Sycamores double that to ten. Mincer. I don't know if his IQ is good enough for Mensa, but his shot's good enough for anybody. 13 point lead to dozen when Mincer three the old-fashioned way. 32 points to career high for him. Indiana State with the upset. 87 to 70. Taking on the Detroit Mercy Titans.
in the semis. Roly Massimino trying to get the troops fired up. They were down big at the half. They're down 48-39. Second half, Theo Dixon trying to bring it back. Good basket in the middle. Would it be enough? Still in the second half, CSU still down now by eight. Dixon gets the bucket and the foul. He had missed the foul shot. Dixon did have 24 points, but it was too much. Detroit, the Titans, a great inbounds pass for Sean Phillips. It's Napoleon, or Hilton Napoleon, and Cleveland State, they lose 91 to 81. In the other semifinal in the MCC, host right State taking on top seeded Butler. First half, Butler's of all Jordan in the lane, hangs and hits. Butler looking strong, right straight, trying to come back though. Joe Bills, the running one-hander, he had two points right there. Wright State is up at the half, 30 to 26. Could they hang on? it? Maybe not. Butler on the break. Jordan here, the layup. That spells trouble for Wright State. Look at this. Beautiful passing. It ends up in Joel Cornette's hands. He had 16 on the day, and Butler wins. Butler now meets Detroit in the finals Tuesday night in the Nutter Center. The Mid-Continent Conference Tournament started today in Fort Wayne. Youngstown State, the number three seed, playing Oral Roberts in the first round. That's Craig Hayes in the corner for the Penguins, tying the game at 21. Still in the first half, Ryan Patton deals it down to Desmond Harrison for the bucket. And later, it's Patton for three. But Youngstown State upset tonight by Oral Roberts, 73-70. Second half, Hofstra up by three. Hofstra. Roberto Gettins finding Danny Walker. Thank you very much. Well, maybe way up you very much. It was close. <laughs> Hofstra by five, main trailing by one. Rick Apodak at 18 Ooh. points. We tried to make a showing off play there. Cohen Hayes would end up converting it mainly. He's 48 to 47. Game tied at 55. Gettins again. Getting it done, I guess. Greg Springfield down low for two. Hops dropped by a deuce. And the artist formerly known as the Flying Dutchman, now called the Pride most of the time, would pull away. Getting the easy bucket, 15.6 boards, five assists. Hofstra, they won 17 in a row, the longest streak in Division One. Delaware also a winner in the America East Tournament. Those two will meet Saturday, next Saturday, for the championship on ESPN. Semifinals of the Colonial Athletic Association, North Carolina, Wilmington. They survive against ODU. They'll move on to take on George Mason. That title game on ESPN2, Monday night, 7.30 Eastern time. Mac with the extra A, Metro Atlantic. Top seed Iona against Maris. Sean Kennedy from Maris. The Red Foxes, much to the delight of Fred Sanford, I'm sure, up by four at the break. Maceo Wolford, the kind role. He was three of four from behind the arc. Iona by six. Next possession, Diary Wilson in some traffic. Jeff Ruin's team wins it 75 to 71. Iona gets Canisius in the championship game. The Golden.